Uh, good afternoon. I guess I got the Reeves treatment. <laughs> uh, uh, and I should, uh, just as background, say that Joel and I uh, uh, worked very closely together uh, for many years here at Caltech on neural prosthetics. Uh, but the last uh, few years, we've uh, taken different directions in moving the basic research to the clinic. So uh, today, we'll uh, both be talking about neural prosthetics for paralysis. And uh, Joel will be talking about uh, the uh, spinal cord and stimulation of the spinal cord. And I'll be talking about uh, research that we do in the cortex. So an example of paralysis would be a spinal cord lesion. That's shown uh, by the figure uh, on the screen. And basically, one would reach out to an object, and the visual information would come through the eyes and be processed in sensory parts of the brain and go over to the motor areas and be issued as a command to the spinal cord that then would innervate the muscles to move the limb to reach to the object. With a spinal cord lesion, this loop is broken. However, it's fortunate that a large part of the circuit is still intact. So we can uh, use these uh, areas that are still intact for neural prosthetic applications to try to help the patient. So Joe will be talking, as I mentioned, about stimulating the spinal cord uh, for recovery. And I'll be talking about recording from groups of neurons in the cortex. So you've seen examples of recordings from single cells. We put in an array of electrodes, which uh, is indicated by this animation here. And we record from order of about 100 neurons simultaneously, and we then uh, decode the information in that population of neurons and use it either to operate a robotic limb or a computer tablet. Now, here are a couple of graduates from our lab. Uh, the monkeys, uh, first we do research uh, on prosthetics with non-human primates before moving to humans. The monkeys, like our graduate students, work for a few years in the lab. Then after that, we remove the implants and retire them to animal sanctuaries. Uh, our graduate students have to go out and find jobs. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, one of the projects that we're working on, funded by DARPA, is called the Revolutionizing Prosthetics um, Program. And we're collaborating closely with Applied Physics Laboratory at Johns Hopkins. And they've developed, to my knowledge, the most sophisticated uh, current computer uh, limb, uh, robotic limb, that uh, has many degrees of freedom. It's very similar to an actual human limb. So uh, you can see it's uh, very dexterous. It has many, uh, essentially all the degrees of freedom that you would need to do things that humans can do. Uh, it uh, can operate on very soft objects. It can um, use, uh, not crush water bottles and uh, really delicate objects, and it can also use tools. And in fact, uh, we have two of these robotic arms in the lab right now, a left one and a right one, for using it, them for bimanual tasks. In this case, uh, the uh, manipulating here uh, with one limb a, a clothespin. Now, this is an example of a monkey in the lab using this uh, robotic limb. And uh, you can see that the monkey's a little more impatient than the human. Uh, <laughs> uh, his task is to reach out and squeeze the ball. And if he squeezes it hard enough, then he gets a drop of juice reward. So you can see here he's squeezing away, and now he's getting uh, his bit of juice. Part of this revolutionizing prosthetic project, uh, we're working with colleagues at the University of Pittsburgh, and they recently implanted a paralyzed patient, uh, uh, Jan uh, Showerman, who had spinal cerebellar degeneration. So she's completely paralyzed except for her uh, above her neck, and they implanted the motor cortex, and uh, they, these implants uh, occurred about a year ago. 
From the beginning, we've been really focused on, you know, how much control can you get of this arm, moving the hand and wrist and everything, but, you know, Jan's goal has really been to feed herself a piece of chocolate. So the uh, little square things are the cables, connectors to the implant in her brain. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in Jan's case, the implants were made in the motor cortex. This is the final output of the cortex that goes to the spinal cord to generate the commands for movement. Uh, we are implanting a different area, it's the posterior parietal cortex. Uh, it's where the initial thought to move or the intent to move is formed. And we think that this more cognitive approach might make for a more intuitive and uh, uh, more versatile kind of uh, neural prosthetic signal to read out for the patient. This uh, is a case where a monkey now with implants in this parietal cognitive area is, and you can see him on the lower right screen, and he's not moving his arm, even though this is the area that usually plans an arm movement. He's operating in a, a virtual reality environment, so you're seeing what he's seeing, and he's moving the silver cursor to the uh, blue, uh, the green ball, and each time he touches it, he gets a drop of juice reward. So he's moving this uh, cursor around purely by thought and without any movement. The idea then is to use these intention signals to drive the uh, robotic limb, but there is a problem with this kind of research, which is uh, for a paralyzed patient, they can use visual feedback to correct the movement. Uh, but to really do fine dexterous manipulation of an object, you also need touch. And they don't have that modality. So what we're doing is we're sensorizing the, the uh, robotic hand and then using that information that comes from the sensors on the hand from touch to then stimulate through another implant the hand representation in the somatosensory cortex. So this means that there are uh, two implants, one for generating the commands to move the limb and the other for feedback of the feeling of touch. Uh, so that, in a sense, completes the loop. Now, this next movie shows an example of a monkey with reach control, uh, again operating in a virtual reality environment, and he's moving this limb in 3D under just visual feedback to touch uh, the object in space. And each time he touches it, and that, uh, you hear that sound, he gets a drop of juice. Now, this is an example of him doing this another task in which the vision is occluded of the end of the, uh, uh, the limb. And so he's operating uh, just by touch. And in this case, he has an implant in the touch area of the somatosensory cortex for the hand. And when he goes to the right position in space, he feels uh, stimulation and he pauses there. And if he pauses there, then he gets his drop of juice. And in this case, that little arrow that you see, uh, he doesn't see. So we just added this to the video afterwards so you can see where in space he gets the stimulation. Uh, and so he's doing this, in this case, purely by uh, somatosensory feedback. Uh, another application that we're uh, currently working on is to use these decoded signals to operate a, a computer tablet. So what you see uh, in this case is a monkey, again, with implants in the brain. So this is a brain control of a cursor, uh, the green cursor. And what he's doing is he's matching a face to a sort of face in the crowd. So a sample comes up, and he has to move the cursor over to the face. And then th uh, once he does that, three faces come up, and he has to find the matching face among the three examples. So we think this is a lot like uh, op opening an icon, uh, say, looking for your iTunes icon on your smartphone. So uh, right now, we are moving to humans. So we have just begun recruiting uh, patients 
for the robotic limb control study, clinical study. Uh, this will be done with uh, USC and with uh, medical school and Rancho Los Amigos Rehabilitation Center, uh, both which are here in Los Angeles. We're also currently obtaining regulatory permissions to do the add to the study the stimulation of somatosensory cortex for feedback. And then finally, we're also uh, getting regulatory uh, 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 approval for a uh, third clinical study which will involve the uh, uh, com computer tablet, and this being with UCLA. So I'd like to thank uh, my uh, wonderful, fabulous members of my lab, uh, our very generous um, granting agencies, and our collabor collaborators at APL, USC, Rancho, and uh, UCLA, UCLA and USC. Thank you. <laughs>